the cardiac cycle is quite complex. It involves the depolarization and repolarization of cardiac muscle with the atria and ventricles uh, undergoing their depolarization and repolarization separately. The intrinsic conduction system, where the primary pacemaker sends electrical message throughout the heart, and then the uh, contraction of ventricular muscle, the opening and closing of valves, etc. The electrical events can be monitored with an ECG, where leads are placed at various points of the body to pick up on electrical changes. There is a normal ECG, and variations from this can indicate something about health. The P wave is the normal electrical change due to the depolarization of the atria. But there are a number of abnormal forms of the P wave which could present in an ECG. These could be caused by the enlargement of the right atrium, uh, the enlargement of the left atrium. Uh, the P wave could be even absent. These abnormal P waves can be caused because of hypertension, malformations of heart valves, certain medications, and other causes. The PQ interval, measured from the beginning of P to the beginning of Q, sometimes called the PR interval because the Q wave is not always present, has a, a normal length. If it is shortened, this could be uh, because electrical impulses are reaching the ventricles through bypass routes. It could be lengthened, especially if uh, there has been a myocardial infarction, which perhaps leaves scar tissue, and this may uh, cause the heart uh, to uh, skip a beat. It uh, may uh, result in slow heart rates and hypotension if the atria and ventricles are no longer uh, following the same rhythm on their contractions. And so there are a variety of different causes of abnormal PR intervals. The QRS complex usually goes down for a small Q portion, up for a larger R, and then down for the S. However, there are some variations. The Q wave uh, can be larger than normal. It can be wider uh, than normal. The R wave can be elevated. The R wave can show poor progression and be depressed. This is often uh, the result of a myocardial infarction, either present or uh, past, but can also be caused by other things, such as the hypertrophy of uh, the ventricles, certain medications, calcium levels, and other causes. The ST segment is usually at baseline in between the end of the QRS complex and the beginning of the T wave. It can uh, be elevated. This is often an indication of myocardial infarction. It can be uh, depressed. Uh, while myocardial infarction is the main cause, calcium levels, some medications, uh, ischemia of uh, the cardiac blood vessels can be causes. And the length of the interval between the beginning of the Q wave and the end of T, known as uh, the QT interval, uh, can be long in what's known as the long QT syndrome, uh, which is often congenital, something that someone is born with, although certain medications can also affect it. The T wave represents the repolarization of ventricles. And there are a number of abnormal shapes of the T wave. It can be depressed. It can even be inverted. Uh, this is typically the result of ischemia, or the narrowing of cardiac blood vessels, limiting oxygen uh, flow uh, to cardiac muscle, and is a good indicator of the risk of a myocardial infarction. There are also other causes, such as pulmonary embolism or pericarditis. Uh, the T wave can even be biphasic. There are other abnormalities which can be detected with ECGs as well, such as premature ventricular contractions, if electrical impulses begin in the ventricles, uh, and uh, tachycardia, uh, an extremely rapid heart rate, and other things. These ECGs are thus very useful because they lessen the need for exploratory surgeries. Through this non-invasive technique, a uh, physician has a good idea of what might be troubling their patient.